good day. This is Trip. We have a poetry reading today from Edgar Allan Poe, The Raven. As you can see, I've moved into a different room. And back of me is my, my mother's china cabinet that she left to me. I'm enjoying my peppermint herbal tea today. And this beautiful little fragrant autumn leaves and pumpkins. This is spice. just a wonderful day and I hope your day is going just as well and your week. Edgar Allan Poe is known for his poetry and especially his short stories, tales of mystery and the macabre. He was one of the central figures of romanticism in the United States. I remembered, I remember enjoying studying the romantic period he was one of the earliest practitioners of the short story. He lived from 1809 to 1849, and he published a poem, this poem, The Raven, in 1845, and it made him a household name instantly. How much did he receive for this effort? He was paid about $9. This poem tells of a of a, a strange visit to a to a distraught lover and traces the man's gradual descent into kind of a, a madness. He's missing very much the the lover that he once had. Hope you like my pumpkins and my scarecrow. We're all together here. outside of school. So let's begin. The Raven, Edgar Allan Poe. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. While I nodded, Nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as was someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I had sought to borrow from my books surcease of sorrow, sorrow for the lost, Lenore. For the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore, nameless here forevermore. And the silken sad and uncertain rustling of each purple curtain, thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, "'Tis some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door.' 
this it is and nothing more. Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. Sir, said I, or madam, truly your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door, darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there, wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming, dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the stillness gave no token. And the only word there spoken was the whispered word, nevermore. Thus I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word, Lenore. Merely this, and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning. Soon again I heard a tapping, somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something at my window's lattice. Let me see, then, what there it is, and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment, and this mystery explore. Tis the wind, and nothing more. Open here, I flung the shutter, when with many a sh flirt and flutter, in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obsessions made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with mien of lord or lady perched upon my chamber door perched upon a bust of Pallas, just above my chamber door, perched and sat, and nothing more. Then this ebony bird, beguiling my sad fancy into smiling, by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore. Though my, thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou, I said, Art sure no craven, ghastly grim, an ancient raven wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's Plutonian shore. Quoth the raven, Nevermore. So, much I marveled, this ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little relevancy bore. For we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door. Bird or beast upon the sculptured bust above his chamber door with such a name as Nevermore. But the raven, sitting lonely on the placid best, spoke only that one word, as if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing further then he uttered, not a feather then he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered other friends have flown before. On the morrow he will leave me, as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, Nevermore. Startled at the stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken, doubtless said I, what it utters is its only stock and store, taught from some unhappy master whom a merciful disaster followed fast and followed faster till his songs one burden bore. Till the dirges of his hope that melancholy burden bore. 
of never, never more. But the raven still beguiling all my fancy into smiling, straight I wheeled a cushioned seat in front of bird and bust and door. Then, upon the velvet sinking, I betook myself to linking, fancy unto fancy, thinking what this ominous bird of yore, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt, and ominous bird of yore meant in croaking nevermore. This I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining, with my head at ease reclining, on the cushions of velvet lining that the lamplight gloated o'er, but whose velvet violet lining with the lamplight gloating o'er, she shall press, ah, nevermore. Then, methought, the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censor, swung by seraphim, whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch, I cried, thy God hath lent to thee, by these angels he hath sent thee. Respite, respite, and nepenthe from thy memories of Lenore. Quaff, O oh, quaff this kind nepenthe, and forget this lost Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, whether tempter sent or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore, desolate yet all undaunted, on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted, tell me truly, I implore, is there, is there balm in Gilead, tell me, tell me, I implore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, be that word our sign of parting, Bird or fiend, I shrieked upstarting, Get thee back into the tempest And the night's Plutonian shore. Leave no black plume As a token of that lie Thy soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken, Quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak out my, my heart, And take thy form from off my door, Quoth the raven, nevermore. And the raven, never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting, on the pallid bust of Pallas, just above my chamber door. And his eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming, and the lamplight over him, streaming, throws his shadow on the floor. And my soul from out the shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore. A reading from Edgar Allan Poe, The Raven. 